Sub Alf. Everyone's got Benny. Me. Alf. You're going myself. Hey, thanks. All 48. Yeah, what, what's Peace your, out, chap. Alf, what's your I think thing? I'm 48 now. Tell me it's just Alf Benny. Alf Benny. <laughs> Is my name. Okay, go to Alf Benny on YouTube, and uh, he needs to get to 100 subs. I'll... Yeah, that that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah, let me go. Let me go sub him. I'm gonna sub him right now. I'll show you how to do it. Ready? Aw, so cute. Oh, that's sweet. Alf Benny. Well, I'll sub him on my. Oh my god, Alf. Just wait till you get the email that says Devin Tracy oh. subscribed to you on YouTube. I was like, what? There we go. Uh, <laughs> now he's got a new video out. Hey guys, Alf here, and today I'm going to talk about Marvel and diversity. So basically, Marvel comic sales are going down the shitter, and uh, the, uh, one of the executives at Marvel called uh, David Gabriel came out and said that uh, what they heard was that people didn't want diversity, that they didn't want female characters, and uh, I think that's pretty much bullshit. I'm a lifelong Marvel fan. Uh, my dad bought me my first comic book when I was six, and I've been collecting Marvel comics mostly since then. I mean, I collect other comics, but mostly Marvel. And um, uh, I stopped collecting them about uh, maybe like a year ago. It really started getting horrible, like terrible writing and uh characters just thrown in for the sake of being diverse as opposed to just naturally coming in and stuff but uh we'll get deeper into that uh aj plus came out with a video about this uh basically an answer to what this uh what marvel basically said all right so let's check it out is diversity killing comics uh no sorry fanboys but no yeah that's what i said uh but no, the fanboys weren't the ones who said they didn't want diversity. Uh, Marvel said they didn't hear that fans wanted diversity, but they're incorrect, and that's the wrong issue. Fanboys want uh, the characters they love, good stories, new interesting characters. Most people don't complain about diverse characters. That it's never happened in the past. I mean, uh, Marvel has been diverse for years. Um, they released the, one of the first... Uh, black characters one of the first uh main black character ongoing comic book series i think they were the first company to have um a black character who uh had a name that didn't have the word black in it so uh marvel has tried diversity for a long time uh women as well in the 70s they tried to make female comic books like captain marvel i mean miss marvel and spider woman so it's not that they were never diverse, they've always tried to be diverse, and people didn't complain about those. I don't think that comics is unique in using diversity and specifically marginalized people's representation as a scapegoat for their own marketing or just poor products. But scapegoat? What are you talking about? I think this girl's got shit backwards, like... They're not saying that what they hear is people don't want diversity to use diversity as a scapegoat. You've got the opposite message, I think. He's shitting on fans by saying that fans don't like diversity. He's basically saying that uh, Marvel fans are racist and sexist, I guess, you know. I don't know where she gets this. That's a weird way to look at that. what, uh, what Marvel said. I, I don't get where she gets that. But uh, I think that's just always on her mind because she says that comics aren't unique in media for doing that. So uh, when has that happened? What media has done this? Um, what movie has said, or what movie company has said, this movie has failed because of diversity? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, it's not the diversity is the issue. The people who say that are, are saying that about the people, uh, about their audience. But in the end, usually what's the problem is, instead of blaming the audience, maybe they should look at their art or their media and see what the issues are. Marvel's vice president thinks new characters are hurting comic book sales. He said what we heard was that people didn't want any more diversity. They didn't want female characters out there. Yeah, that's what he said. To me, that doesn't sound like uh, he's saying diversity is the issue. To me, it sounds like he's saying the audience is the issue. Um, in truth, it's not diversity. Again, as I said before, it's their shitty writing and hiring a, a staff based on um, diversity as opposed to who is best for the job, who's got the best experience, hiring a uh, rookie writer straight out of college who've never worked on a comic book and putting them on a big title. Uh, these people need to work their way up. That's how it's always been. They have like compilation comics where they'll start 
the new writers on so they can, you know, see how good they are and build their way up to a main title. Instead, they're just throwing uh, people onto main titles just because they're a, a minority or, or a female or a lesbian. You know, it doesn't work that way. You need good writing. Uh, people aren't going to stick around if your characters are unlikable and the stories don't make any sense. But last year, that same vice president noted that women make up 40% of Marvel's readers. So 40% are women readers, but what does that have anything to do with it? Uh, we have no other numbers. How do we know that that 40%, uh, what percentage of that 40% read uh, comic books with female leads? Just because 40% are women doesn't mean that they all read female-led uh, comic books. You know, maybe a, a good percentage of those like Spider-Man and uh, Captain America or group comic books like The Avengers or X-Men, which are like the most popular car comic books for Marvel. Uh, just because 40% are women doesn't mean that they, um, that they only read diverse comics. Also, um, a lot of those people could be women who were... Um, interested in seeing a comic book with a female lead, uh, picked up the first few issues and slowly dropped off when they saw the writing sucked. Or uh, maybe they even did like the writing, but they weren't, they're not really comic book people. This, this happens all the time with all types of genres of media where somebody will get into it for a second because they see something they're interested in, but they're not really interested in it. So they'll only be stick around for a little while before they drop out, you know, like Say a girl sees uh, the new Miss Marvel comic and says, oh, that looks awesome. They pick it up, they start reading it, but they're not really comic book fans. So it won't be too long till before they get bored of it and they drop off. So that 40%, uh, they don't say for how long Marvel has had 40% female readers. So that could have just been taken at its highest point and it could really go up and down for all we know. So this, this statistic is really useless and doesn't really help her argument at all. And some of Marvel's diverse characters are actually resonating. Miss Marvel features Pakistani-American Muslim teen Kamala Khan as its superhero. And the character's co-creator, Sana Amanat, has said that the comic is a number one digital bestseller for Marvel. Yep, Miss Marvel started off pretty well. Uh, it was a new and interesting character. It was pretty well written. But um, if we look at the sales throughout the years, um, starting from last year in 2015, uh, Miss Marvel sold 32,855 issues of Miss Marvel number 16 in June of 2015. Then in 2016, a year later, uh, she sold 31,798. Uh, was still pretty steady after a year, but it did go down a little. And I'm sure from before june 2015 it probably went down significantly because it probably sold like in the hundreds of thousands for the first issue but now if we go to this year and see the sales numbers for june 2017 we would find that they've only sold 17,907 issues that's pretty much half of its sales from then as you can see people are dropping off it's not that they don't like the character i'm sure um a lot of people who dropped off uh still like the character but they probably didn't like the writing they didn't like the direction it was going in um this seems to be an issue marvels tends to double down on this stuff and they don't want to give up on these characters when they really should uh maybe not well i should rephrase that not give up on the characters but rewrite these characters uh get new writers in get something fresh going on if they still have the same writer from Miss Marvel and sales are going down, maybe it's the time to switch writers and go in a different direction with that character. Just last year, the Black Panther series sold more than 250,000 copies in North America alone. And a movie is in the works with a cast that Marvel's president has said is 90% African or African American. Well, uh, last year, Black Panther sold 253,259 copies. That's insane. But that's most likely for issue number one. They didn't, they're not really saying which uh, specific issue sold that many copies. But let's take a look at how much it sold last month. And um, here you can see 25,466 copies. That's uh, not a very good sale. Um, I guess, and it has a movie coming out soon. I guess Black Panther isn't doing so well anymore either. Um, another funny thing, 
about uh, what she was saying about uh, Black Panther being the movie being 90 percent um, African or African-American. There was an article that came out that was saying that this was the most diverse superhero movie. But um, they must be changing the definition of the word diversity because 90 percent of one race in anything is not diverse. That's pretty much the opposite of the definition of the word diverse. So what's the one thing those successes have in common? They were created by people who reflect the characters they're writing. They want to have their cake and eat it too. And they can represent black women on the page. They can represent disabled people on the page if they'd like, but they don't really hire black women. They don't hire disabled people. Uh, notice the phrasing here. It's quite deceptive. Uh, she says they're not hiring black people. They're not hiring disabled people. Using that word kind of makes it seems like they won't hire those people. Instead, she could have said like, but they haven't hired black people. They haven't hired disabled people. This is like the problem though. Um, those people aren't the only people who can write characters. You don't have to be black to write a black character. You don't have to be disabled to write a disabled character. It, it just doesn't work that way. Um, like they showed images like uh, Professor X. Uh, that character has been successful in the past by uh, written by uh, non-disabled people. This isn't the first time Black Panther's been successful. Black Panther has had many successes in the past, often written by white men. So they do have that in common, those two comics they showed. But that's not just because they have that in common doesn't necessarily mean that's why they did well. They did well, most likely because there were well written books. Another thing is, uh, as I mentioned before, the issue number one thing, the first issue of comics always sells more. You don't really know how well a comic book's going to do until it's a couple issues in. Because then the people who are just checking it out from the start start dropping off if they don't like it. So if you want to see like real figures for like comics and shit, check out the sales figures for like half a year to a year after it's released, after uh, the series starts. That's how you find out the how well a comic book is really doing. But yeah, so um, what they're saying here is bullshit because... Uh, uh, the success of a comic book doesn't have to do with the race or disability or, or anything that the writer identifies as. The, the success of a comic book is based on how well it is written, how well it captures their audience. Men outnumber women 9 to 1 in the comics industry, and 79% of those men are white. Which is pretty strange for an industry whose heroes are meant to represent the underdog. World War II marked what's called the golden age for comics, when mostly Jewish creators drew characters who fought for the common people and took down Nazis. Yeah, that's not strange at all. Am I the only one who thinks that? Why is it strange that 79% is white people? Uh, comic books, I'm pretty sure, well, first off, the ma majority of the population of America is white. The majority of people who read comic books are men. So I would think the majority of people who read comic books are white men. So the majority of comic book writers are going to be white men. And then she says uh, that's strange because they're supposed to re represent the underdog. White people are have no white person has ever been the underdog. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. White people can be underdogs. That seems kind of racist of you to say that. Then she brings up uh, Jewish, that most of the writers were Jewish and, you know, they would write about people knocking out Hitler and stuff. Uh, yeah. So what? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? This is really like the most useless point and she has no argument here. It's just strange. This is this is the mentality that happens with these people because they think about these things so much that it's the only way that they can view this. You know, they can't see it any other way. And that's not to say that, you know, white men can't write anything but white men, but instead that um, that level of authenticity that has been kind of disregarded for a long time is clearly responding with the readers in a big way. And it seems that Marvel's rejecting that. Uh, no, Marvel's not rejecting that. Uh, as I said before, Marvel's doubling down on this and uh, continuing to make these comic books with shitty writers, uh, with uh, characters with personality nobody likes. And um, they're continuing to make comic books like this. Their sales are continuing to drop. So, um, and as I said before, they're not blaming it on diversity. They're blaming it on the audience. So she's wrong about that. If you've read some of these comics that are coming out lately, um, they're not authentic at all. These people uh, act like, 
like fan fiction characters. It's like we're like they're hiring people straight out of college and putting them to write comic books, and they're straight up writing fan fiction. That the dialogue is is bullshit. I'll go into that in a later uh, video, but yeah, uh, there's no level of authenticity regardless of who's writing it. Even if it's like a, a Hispanic person writing a Hispanic character, the level of authenticity is not there. But if Marvel can make fans feel emotionally invested in a gun-toting raccoon, then surely they're up to the challenge of including more women and people of color. So yeah, that's what's happening at Marvel. Um, uh, yeah, they're going downhill fast. Um, uh, the issue is that they are pushing this SJW identity politics type stories. They are pushing it too hard. It, it's, it's overt. Marvel has always been diverse. Marvel has always put social commentary and stuff like that in their comics. But it's subtle. If you put it too overt, it, it, it just doesn't seem natural. It just seems wrong. Let's, let's take X-Men, for instance. Um, the X-Men were a social commentary at the time for uh, racism and segregation. But it was very subtle. It, instead of having uh, people of a particular race be persecuted, these people were mutants. They were different from human beings. So they were treated differently. This was an allegory for racism and segregation. Done subtle. And this is why it became popular. If Marvel keeps pushing this and having terrible writing like this, they are going to they are going to fail. There's no way they can come out of this. The movies do great. If you notice, the movies messages are subtle. They don't they're not out in your face. The female characters aren't always mentioning their women, you know. It, uh, characters aren't always talking about their identity, you know. You don't hear the Falcon in every scene say, "Well, as a black man, I think that, you know, that who does that who does that in real life um maybe these uh millennial sjw kids do that but um that's ridiculous it's just not natural it, it's very it, it doesn't work it, any yeah when have you seen a movie like that that uh that it's uh morality and social commentary straight out in your face and constantly being mentioned um it if you did, it, it's probably not a very good movie. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I made this video to show you guys all the sides of it, what Marvel said, what the SJW side thinks of what Marvel said, and what the true and you know and and the fan side, what the true reason why Marvel's doing bad is. So on the next video, because there's going to be more, um, I want to do it on women in comics, uh, staff and writers. Uh, one of my favorite writers in Marvel history was a woman. And so we'll go into that and you guys can see that Marvel has always been diverse, that it's never been an issue, that SJWs pushing their way into everybody's favorite medias are ruining those media. It's ruining art. You know, comic books are getting ruined by SJWs, just like they try to ruin video games and all the video games that have pandered to them have been failing. All the comics that have been pandering to them are failing. There's there's a reason for that. <laughs> Because SJWs care so much about their bias, about their, their agenda, that they can't write a fucking decent story because it consta has to constantly mention these things. You know, has to constantly be like, I'm gay as a gay person. You know, I'm gay. So everything has to do with me being gay. I have to mention it every two seconds and throw it in your face. It's just not realistic. So, um... Yeah, stay tuned for the next one, uh, probably in a week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Okay, cool. You're all over the map. Now, let's see what it says. He says, reviews of... For movies, books, TV, comics, video games. Nerd alert. And just yeah. yapping my mouth off in general. Enjoy. Wow. Look at you. Very nice. Very welcoming.